This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another exciting podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I am Jeremy Lopez, and as always, I'm thrilled and glad to be with each one of you today. I tell you, it's raining outside and a little bit of thunder and lightning, but you know what? Hey, I'm not scared of anything, and Mother Nature's got to have her way, right? So God has his way on what he wants to do on the earth. You know, I'm excited you guys joined me today because I wanted to talk about some some um some ideas that's going to begin to help you to learn how to manifest in your life. You know, um I know so many people who say my biggest problem Jeremy is the crossover to manifestation. I can think it, I can believe it, but for some reason I can't manifest it. Well, let me say this to you. Sometimes when you think you can focus and sometimes when you think, you know, you're really intently focusing on something, uh, that actually is the problem of why you can't manifest. Because when you're dealing with manifestation, you have to begin to understand on your focus, is your focus crystal clear? Or is your focus what you want? Let me give you a great example. If I was to say to you, you know, hey, I want a new car. I want a new car. I want a new car. God's promised me. I got this prophetic word and God's promised me that I was going to get an, another car. Okay. So if I just focus on the fact of just a car, what happens is, believe it or not, my subconscious, my brain actually sort of doesn't initiate the emotion behind it. So therefore, the power, the energy, the anointing is not going to be as strong to push and drive that thought through, right? Because what I'm doing is I'm being more general. Now, a lot of times people say, well, you know, do you really want to give, you know, detail? Is that is that important? You, you look at life and you realize manifestation deals with details and also deals with non-details. Let me tell you what I mean by that. If I was to sit here once again and say I want a car, right? Then my mind is going to be saying, well, God's promised me a car. Do I need a car? Sure, I need a car. And then you're thinking about that. But there's not a deep, passionate drive because you're too busy being simplistic uh, in general. And and here's the problem with that is sometimes that can be okay, but it's not the best in the world because you're not actually having your emotions behind it. you got to begin to drive something in you. I'll give you another good example. Let's say, for example, if you have uh, you know someone that you dearly, dearly love. Let's say they're dying with cancer. They're, they're bedridden and they got a certain amount of weeks, you know, or days or months to live. And you have this big unction of, you know what? I'm going to believe God that they're going to be healed. I'm going to pray. I don't want them to die. Well, here's what happens is your love. And I want you to think about this for a moment. Your love takes over. Your love begins to drive the emotion. Your passion begins to push forth through that love to begin to get every fiber of your being into the same full agreement to believe that that person that you love more than anything in your life is going to live. And so what happens is every fiber of your being is going to begin to come forward and every bit of it is going to begin to push and drive that thing forward. Imagine the Bible where it says the woman with the issue of blood. Now, many of you know me. I know that I love this story. The woman with the issue of blood, when she came in, you know, uh, she followed Jesus and she you know, came into the crowd, pushed her towards the crowd, and she, be grab, she began to grab the, the hem of his garment. And when she did, the Bible says she said within herself. Now, I, I love this verse. I could say this verse every day of my life, the rest of my life, and still get something new out of it. Because she, the Bible says she said within herself. And I love that phrase more than anything because... It's a letting me know she could have easily just said out loud, Hey, Jesus, heal me, heal me, heal me. And that probably wouldn't, probably would have been good enough anyway. But what happened was there was something within her because there's a love and a passion that is pushing her forward. Now, let me, let me break this down for you. Usually, and you can, you can look into this sort of scientifically, you can look at it medically, that when you have someone who is so driven with passion and love that every part of them inside begins to push that forward, here's what happens is 
they begin to get full agreement that nothing can change their mind on this issue. Nothing at all can change their mind. So there's more of a drive, there's more of a push to say this thing is going to happen, you know, do or die. You know, the old saying, come hell or high water, right? Because the idea is there's a passion in you that it has to be done. It has to be done. And what happens is when you look at that woman with the issue of blood who said within herself, what happens is you realize that this woman, now the Bible doesn't tell us this, but you can look into this in a medical scientific type of world and metaphysical world to look to understand she must have really deeply wanted a healing. Now here's what this story tells me. That, that, that fact that she thought within herself and she said within herself it shows me that she's been pondering on this for a while that she's been and the Bible makes it plain she's been a doctor after doctor so imagine the disappointment you would get going to the doctors right imagine the disappointment you would begin to to have when people say you're never going to be healed what's, the, what's your problem what's your issue I don't know what to do for you ma'am here's what happens when you begin to have that there's something of either do or die there's something within her that began to really say you know what I refuse to give up I can't give up I have to have this I have to have my healing I got I got kids, I got grandkids, I got a job, I got things to do. So this story says when it says that she said within herself, this story is telling me automatically that she's been through hell and back. But it, more importantly, it tells me she has settled in herself. Either she's got a vision that she knows that she's supposed to accomplish some things in her life of destiny. She's got a dream or passion that she's either going to get another job, have another baby, get married, run a marathon, whatever. But it says a lot because you never say within yourself until you know that you know that you know you have convinced yourself you have manipulated for lack of better words and those who know me know manipulation can be used in a bad word a bad you know a negative connotation but yet it also can be a good one because what you do is you have to manipulate the brain that's all you do there's nothing wrong with that manipulating the brain means I tell you what to believe over what you feel is right for you for example, once again, if I say to myself, you know, hey, I'm going to manipulate her. Let's say, for example, um, I've got a friend of mine here, let's say Tom, and I'm going to, I want him to believe that I'm the greatest on planet Earth. I want him to believe that I am the richest man on planet Earth. Let's just go there for a moment. And so I'm going to begin to persuade, I'm going to begin to manipulate the brain. What does that mean? It means I throw in things, you know, within his mind as I'm talking to him through conversation to make him believe and build up this faith that, man, he owns this and he owns this and he owns this. Not that I do, but yeah, know that he has this he has this and and you know I'm able to lift this you know strong thing over here and the other day I was able to lift this and lift that what happens is the more that I convince him the more my the more I begin to manipulate his mind from what he believed about me to be able to get him to see what I want him to believe and so we throw in those you know those words those adjectives those verbs we begin to tell story after story of you know how I'm able to buy this and buy this building and buy this you know big complex and buy me a new car what happens is after a while you manipulate the brain to where the brain says look I'm getting an override and manipulating literally means to sort of override that which is already there and so that's what you do so believe it or not within your life even when the Bible says to renew the mind now if I was to say if the Bible was to say manipulate the mind many of you would freak out thinking oh my god that sounds like a cult you know that's a bad word it's not a bad word. That's exactly what it means. It means you're manipulating your mind. What is faith? Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Check this out. But it's the evidence of things not seen. So there is no, there's absolutely positively no proof of the natural, okay, not at all, of what I'm believing for. If I haven't seen it, I haven't heard it, I've never witnessed it, I've never experienced it, then all of a sudden faith is letting me know it doesn't it is not on the radar. It is nowhere on the radar whatsoever. But it's things I'm hoping for that maybe possibly could manifest. And the only way that faith is letting me know that it could manifest is by my faith. And so I've got to have faith to move the mountains. I gotta have faith to believe. I got a faith that the Bible says faith uh, that that made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. You notice that your faith has made you whole. 
Why would faith make me whole? Because my faith was built up enough to manipulate my brain to say, this is already done. This is already a done deal. I'm already healed. I'm already rich. I already have a new car. I've already got my new job. Or I already have a wife. Or I already have a husband. I already have five children. So what happens is the faith is guaranteeing you to let you know that your mind has already been manipulated to say, wow, I'm living this reality of having either, you know, I'm healthy or I have all this money or I have the wife, the kids, the dream home, the job, you know, whatever. Faith is automatically speaking to my brain as if it's already there. And so my brain begins to act on the fact that it's already there. This is the reality. This is not a dream. This is not a fantasy. This is not an imagination. This is real. And the brain begins to tell the whole body and the emotions and everything else, this is real, right? I mean, think about it, folks. Think, think about how powerful the brain is. If you think about a dream, now I know pretty much every one of you, Someone in your life has had a, has had a bad horror dream, right? Like bad nightmare. Maybe you're falling into a pit. You're falling, you know, as far, as far as you can. Or you're being chased by this monster. Or you're being, you know, um, someone is coming to stab you. You know, whatever horrible dream, I hope you, hopefully you don't have any, but whatever horrible dream you have in your dream, in your dream, in your dream, it's real for you. If you could get money your body, you'd be like, man, oh, this is a dream. It's not even reality. But in your dream, it's real for you, right? In your dream, it is like, oh my God, I'm being chased. I'm going to die if I don't save this guy. How do I know this stuff? Because I'm a dream interpreter. I interpret people's dreams every single day of my life. And the reason why, because for them, it was real. Why? Because God wanted to make a big impact on that person. And the best way to do it for them to believe something, maybe in a nightmare, but something else, is to be able to give them a dream to where in their dream realm, they will believe it is 100% true and accurate. And trust me when I say this to you guys, the brain will remember that. And so what do they do? They wake up. They're like, oh my God, I got to write this down. It was so real to me. I got to find out the interpretation because that's what the brain does. The brain doesn't know the difference between reality and, and, and just wishful thinking. It doesn't know the difference. And the great thing about that is it coincides and works with faith because it's basically saying whatever you want to believe, you can believe that. Whatever you want to feel about yourself, you can feel that. I gave you another example. I have a friend of mine who actually had his gallbladder, gallbladder taken out years ago, and it's actually called a, a, fa a phantom, a phantom, uh, you know, feeling. And you might think, what is that? Here's what this means. When he had his gallbladder taken out years ago, and if you had your block gallbladder taken out, you'll realize that it hurts. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, before, you know, how do we know our gallbladder has, you know, kapooed, our gallbladder is gone? It's because we have pain there. I had my gallbladder removed years and years ago. And before that, I thought I was dying. I would, I mean, whether I'm eating something or whatever, I'm like, I've had this bad, horrible, sharp pain in my side. And I'm like, my God, I'm dying here. What's going on here? And then you have your gallbladder taken out. And you're like, praise God, I feel great now, right? And so my point being is he has what they call phantom feelings there. And even though he has no gallbladder, he will actually feel at times the phantom feeling as if that gallbladder is there because he will feel like this phantom pain. Now you might think, wow, is that possible? It sure is possible. Possible. There are people every day that I that I encounter all the time who who their mind is con it has con they have convinced their brain that they're sick or they convince their brain they're in pain and guess what they will manifest in their body pain and doctors sometimes can say oh, there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you I've known people like that I've been every doctor and yet there's nothing wrong with you you know I'm having you know these pains over here there's nothing wrong with you and so in certain cases like that the mind can tell the body what you want it to believe and you can convince yourself that you're having pain and yet you will have pain in places where there's nothing existing hello happens all the time give you guys another great example you know I carry my iPhone uh, I carry my iPhone using my back pocket. So, you know, I have it on vibrate all the time. So I can feel it vibrate in my pocket all the time. Okay. So imagine when I take my phone out, there have been numerous amounts of times and weekly. I mean, almost weekly. This happens to me almost a daily, a daily occurrence, but I can feel, I can feel the back of my mind, behind actually feel as if it's vibrating and I'll reach behind there thinking my phone's vibrating. And guess what? There's no phone there. But yet, I can feel that vibration. How many of you have done that before? Where you're like, man, I can feel, I, my phone must be ringing. Well, your phone's on the table. It's not even on you. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. 
How many have done it before? Because you have convinced your brain to keep a signal to say, look out for that. Look out for that. I gotta be, I gotta be cautious. Gotta be alert. Gotta be awake. My phone vibrates or rings, right? And so don't for a moment think that your brain is not powerful because it is. Don't think for a moment your brain is not so amazing that literally it could convince you of your feelings, your emotions, even pain, um, sadness, anything. It can convince your body to believe whatever you want it to believe because you fed into that in that mind so now we deal with faith and we deal with manifestation what does it mean to manifest manifestation can come, only comes about when you truly believe and you could we could say it this way when you manipulate the mind to believe that you have it it is on its way you can feel it you can touch it you can taste it you can sense it you believe it and and, and how do you know how can you put the testing and put to test your manifestation very easily if you've ever felt that vibration of that phone I talked about when the phone is not even on you, you know, or you feel something that you're like, something feels like it's wrong, but yet nothing's wrong with me. Because what happens is you've already alerted your body to be on the lookout, be on the lookout. And so you believe in that be on the lookout because my phone might vibrate, right? Well, guess what? That's manifestation. Plain and simple, that's a manifestation. So when you're dealing with, let's say, things of the promises of God that you're trying to manifest, you, you, you have to get to that place where your faith is literally telling your body and your brain and your emotions and every fiber of your being that it is here, you have it. And even sometimes you'll know it because sometimes you can feel as if if you're looking for a chocolate candy bar, which my goodness, folks, I don't know about you, but I have, oh, I could have one right now. Chocolate Hershey bar with almonds. I mean, just dive into that. Get a glass of cold milk. I am, I am set for the heavens, right? But yet sometimes there's been people who said, I, I, I believe it so much, Jeremy, I could taste it in my mouth. How many of you have ever thought about food that way? How many of you ever desired a, you know, a, maybe a good dessert or someone is talking about ice cream or someone is talking about whatever kind of food you really love and all of a sudden your mouth starts watering? Think about that. How did, how on earth would your mouth start watering? It starts watering because you, your mind is hearing and believing what is told to you. And what do you do? You start getting visuals in your mind. Oh my God, that ice cream. I could just picture the ice cream and that hot chocolate running down the ice cream. Many of you are probably like, like, shut up, Jeremy. I'm on a diet. Leave me alone. But can you can you think of that? And as you think it, your mouth starts watering. Why? Because automatically it's telling you right now, you actually have built in the mind of faith to manipulate your mind enough that now it's alerting your body. It's pretty much the same exact thing in the spirit realm when it deals with the power to manifest. When you believe God for a promise, you believe God for something that you know that God has promised you to begin to, 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 to come about in your life, you got to believe it so much and have faith so much that you're sitting here thinking, I can taste it, I can feel it, like I can feel it on my body, I can feel my emotions getting happy because you only can attract something that you are. Now, you've heard me say this before. We don't attract what we think so much. We attract more what we are, what our belief in us is saying. The woman with the issue of blood said within herself, if I could just reach up and touch his garment, I will be healed. She said it within herself, not outwardly. Because she knew outwardly, say it within her, without, if she said it outwardly, she knew it would make a difference. It would make a big difference. If she said it out loud, people would just hear her thinking, you're crazy. But see, what was more important to her is that she continues that affirmation. We could say affirmation, mantra, whatever you want to use there, whatever it is. She kept on saying the affirmation over and over and over again to where the inside of her just began to vibrate with that sound of I'm being healed. I'm being healed. Once I do this, I'm healed. The moment I touch that, I am healed. And so it wasn't so important. She said out loud. What was important is that the, that Jesus said virtue. Who touched me? Virtue came out of me. Virtue came out of me. Not, you see, it really wasn't the hem of his garment that healed her. It was that virtue came from inside of him. Notice how you've got a story here where Jesus refers to the inside of him. Virtue came out of me. So automatically, it's something within inside of him that went into the inside of her because she said, if I say within myself, right? And so you've got two people here that, that understand the whole dynamics of manifestation by faith, law of attraction, whatever you want to call it. Two people here automatically recognize that it's not important that I say it out loud. It's not important that I get a goosebump on my skin. What's important is that we've got two people here that knew the power. If they want manifestation, it has to come from within.
Because Jesus was the inner kingdom. He is the inner kingdom. And so because of that, guess what? He knew virtue came from inside of him. How did virtue come from in, from uh, from inside of him to the outside to touch her? Because he knew the kingdom of God was in him because he was the kingdom. He knew what was in him. When you know yourself and you know what you carry, here's the key thing. He knew what he carried. He knew what he was. He knew who he was. And therefore, when you know, and when you know from deep within, that's why when you hear the scripture, you know, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Everything in the universe comes and starts from within. Everything does. You can't. You can't really imagine. But when you deal with science and you deal with, um, you know, um, spirituality, you deal with, you know, the, the power of the of the Word of God. You're dealing with everything comes from a seed within before it shows up on the outside. And so, because of that, you've got to begin to realize if you want something to happen, you can't just say it, confess it, say it, confess it, confess it. You've got to believe it to where it, your insides are so manipulated by your belief system. That you can feel that vibration. You can feel, let's say, that heat. You can feel the emotion. You can feel the goosebumps on the inside. You can feel it to where the insides automatically are aligning with what you want it to believe. Because the moment you know yourself and the moment you realize that if I want something so bad, I've got to become it, that the moment you finally become it, and here, that's where people miss it. Well, you know, I, I've heard what you said, Jeremy. I've got to become it. And so I hear them all the time saying this. So in order for me to become it, i got to say it out loud. And I'm just saying it, saying it, saying it. Because they say, because they think to themselves, if I say it out loud, it'll just continue to get inside of me. Well, that's partially true. It does. However... You've got to first of all believe it inside too, because your voice speaking it sometimes will not always confirm, uh, or, or sort of, excuse me, your words will not always sort of set the, set the stage for your heart to truly believe it. There's a lot of people out there that I hear talk the talk all the time, but they can't walk the walk because they're too busy talking it and they put too much belief in their talk and their conversation, but they haven't put enough belief on the inside of themselves only because they don't know themselves yet. They haven't discovered their own power. And you might, and, and here's the difference. When people begin to come to me and say, well, I've been saying it out loud, saying it out loud every single day, confessing it, believing it, and I, yet I know there's no feeling to it, there's no heartfelt revelation to it, um, you know, to the point of, of love and compassion and desperation, then, then, then they turn around and they say, but it never happened for me. I said, because you try to convince yourself the only per the only way the only reason why a person will try to convince themselves is because they don't believe it the moment you begin to start manipulating the mind and here's here's how you manipulate the mind is not just reading god's word but it's getting it so deep in your heart to where your heart then begins to convince your you know your your mind think about that you know, out of the issue of the, you know, the heart speaketh, you know, out of the mouth, you know, out of the heart and mouth speaketh, which means once your heart grabs a hold of the revelation of it, hey, you know what? That's all that matters. That's all it takes for you. But if you're trying to convince your heart out of your mouth from speaking it, it's never going to work. If it doesn't come from deep within you to where everything inside of you believes it completely, it's never going to happen for you. So you're going to have to begin to get into that place where you're getting out of your head and you're getting into your heart. And the moment you get into your heart and you believe within your heart, heart like the bible says then the moment you do that then your mind will begin to be manipulated by the by the truth that is setting it free and so speaking it out loud will not be a problem because notice that notice how with the woman with you uh, you know at the at the well when jesus said i'll give you water that will cause you to never thirst again and he says out of your belly out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water notice how he didn't say he didn't start with the outside of her saying it he started with the inside of her saying it because he says, if, if she believes me and understands and knows that who I, of who I am out of the fact of who she knows she is within me, then what happens is automatically, guess what? She's going to begin to turn around and find out that there's, there's rivers in her belly. Because rivers in your belly can over, only begin to come out and overflow when you understand that there are rivers in you. When you begin to understand there is a kingdom in you. When you begin to realize the power that you are. You know, people try to work so hard on the outside of them themselves they never take time to to work on the inside of themselves because truthfully if you want to get nitty gritty with all this stuff folks identity is where it is if you don't know who you are i'm not talking about whose you are in god we get that completely yes you belong to god we get that but belonging to god god will turn around and require for you to know who you are 
Because I guarantee you, God spoke to me one day and he said, Jeremy, I know, I know that you know me. Okay? I know that you know that I, you know, that I'm yours and you're mine. That's wonderful. But I'm not asking for that, Jeremy. What I'm asking for is, what do you believe in your heart? Who do you believe in your, what, who do you believe in your heart you are? Because, you know, lips can praise all day long. But if it's not coming from the heart, you know, out of, of a, out of a person who knows who they are in Him, that's the idea. That's where people miss it. It's knowing who you are in Him. It's not just, I'm hidden away in Him. And you have no earthly idea, no clue who you are and what you're capable of doing. That means nothing to God. Nothing. Anybody can quote that. It's not about, it's not about, oh, I'm hidden away in Him. No, don't give me that, that excuse. That's nothing more than an excuse. Tell me who you are. If you're in Him, you should know who you are more than anybody on this planet. Because you will never manifest until you know who you are. Not just the fact, oh, I belong to God. Well, guess what? All of us belong to God, right? Every man on this planet, every woman on this planet is made in his image and likeness. So everybody on this planet is made in his image. And, 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 and so because of that, that's no big revelation. Oh, I know who I belong to. Well, that's great and wonderful. Thank God you do. But everybody else should know that too. But the point being with that is it's not about who you belong to. It's do you know who that person is called God made you to be? If you don't know who you, who he made you to be, then here's a problem with this. He doesn't, God doesn't have a problem manifesting. You do. So it's not, it's, so the power is not so much in a way, but long, I know whose I am. Well, that's great and wonderful. But God's looking down at you and saying, I'm glad you do, but I can manifest. I don't have a problem with it. You do. So in order for you to manifest, you got to know who you are, that I've, that I've called you, who, you know, who are, who have I called you to be in me? Because if you don't know that, I, I can't manifest it for you. Not my job to manifest. My job is to, is to get my word in you to where it transforms you and renews your mind and you begin to see with clarity by calling those things upon be they not as though they were and the moment you get to know, know yourself or what capable of doing, gosh, guess what? You're a world, world joyster. The sky's the limit for you. There's nothing you can't accomplish. And this is the, where the power is, folks. Seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Why? Because the kingdom of God is found within man. Once again, here's God again saying, go within, go within, not without, go within, go within. The moment you begin to go within and know who you are, then there's no stopping you. The world can't stop you. Think about it. The world can't stop you. How do I know people don't know who they are? I talk to people every single day in life coaching, all the time, all day long. And here's the here's stories that I hear. Oh, I know who I am in Jesus. And all of a sudden they turn around and the rest of their conversation, I, 80% of the conversation is, well, so-and-so hurt my feelings. So-and-so made me mad. We're no friends anymore. When I was in this group the other day, they wanted me to pray out loud. They put pressure on me. I don't want, you know, they don't know who I am. Well, the problem with that is this, is, you know, it's not about what people, what people think about you. <laughs> who cares what people think about you? What matters is what you think about yourself. Right? You can't love your neighbor until you love yourself. So you can't even give love away to anybody else, period, until you first love yourself. So notice the power of transition. Notice we're transitioning into the fact of seeking first the kingdom, understanding what is within you, Christ within the hope of glory. And so the moment you begin to dive inwardly and learn to love who you are, know your identity, then manifestation should be a problem for you. Manifestation is a problem for a lot of people because they see other people have things and they want to manifest the same things those people do. And so they're trying to feed off other people's imaginations and, and, and materialism to manifest what they want in their life. And then when they don't manifest it, they say, God must not love me like he does, uh, you know, so and so. Because so and so has a new car. Why can't I have a new car? I've been praying on it, seeking God on it because you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are, and you're plus, secondly, you're trying to manifest something someone else has. That's not a revelation. There's not, no word whatsoever of revelation in that verse. Not even glory, not even an epiphany or an awakening. You can't use all those, you can't use any of those words there because it's not. It's not, not, it's not, it's not right to use those because you're working off somebody else's revelation, somebody else's manifestation. So guess what? You're just here to set yourself up for, for failure. You're never going to win on, on that note. The moment you know who you are, what you are, and what you're capable of doing, and you, and you spend time and quality with the person that you have become in your life, once you get to know thyself, manifestation will not be a problem for you. That's why I always say to people, 
Don't tell me how good you are, how anointed you are. Oh, I can prophesy out the walls, I paint off the walls. Well, that's great and wonderful, but I really don't care. <laughs> because of the fact it's not where you are right now. You called me because you have an issue because of the fact you can't seem to love yourself. To know your identity. And trust me, God's not going to look at you one day and say, Well, yeah, good for you, man. You pray in tongues every day. You interceded all day long. But you have no clue who I made you to be. So, so you don't even know, if you don't know your image out of me, how are you going to know me? Hello? I mean, just got that. If we're made in the image and likeness of God, and here you are trying to find your imagery, your beingness, which is the likeness of God, and you know, trying to define that of how and how it how it fits you. If you don't know these things, you're not going to manifest. Then my my second question would be: If that's the case, are you sure you know Him? Because if you know His image and you know your image, which is His image in you, then it shouldn't be that difficult to know Him, right? So you have to begin to look at all this stuff and realize if I want to manifest, I gotta have my body feeling it. I gotta have my mind and my soul feeling it. Every goosebump, every, every, uh, you know, everything. The moment that happens, boom, you begin to manifest. So I wanted to give you these steps today because I want every one of you to begin to think about this stuff. Ponder on it. This stuff works for me. Every single day of my life, it works for me. So I know what I'm talking about, folks. I know it's biblical. I know the, the, the phrases, the Greek and Hebrew phrases, what these words represent. But more importantly, I know a, a revelation that it works on an every day to day basis. So because of that, go to the ministry right now, identitynetwork.net, identitynetwork.net. When you do in the search engine, put in these words, school of the law of attraction school of the law of attraction six words or you can just put in school of the law and it should put up automatically choose the digital download to the score to the school folks of law of attraction you desperately need it and it'll help correct some things in your mind for you to begin to see with with clarity that maybe some things you were not doing right because if you're like me, we want clarity. We want to begin to manifest. We want to be able to have everything God wants for us and move in those promises. So your main thing is this. It's not good enough to believe what God said is true over you. That, that doesn't mean anything. I can believe, I can, I can believe God's promises all day long. But believing has nothing to do with anything. It's, it's manifesting those promises. That's why the Bible says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It doesn't say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, uh, through your conversation as it is in heaven. <laughs> no. It says, as it is in. Notice the word in, I-N. As it is in the earth. Right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's got to manifest on earth. On earth that comes out of, comes from in heaven. And so because of that, guess what that's telling us? We gotta to begin to believe, know it's real, play that role out, for lack of better words, pardon me for saying this, manipulate the brain by renewing it to convince it. Feel it, touch it, smell it, taste it to where it's yours. And all of a sudden, you're going to turn around and say, I got it. Manifested today. I got it. Turned out to be last night. Got it. Look what happened last night. And that begins that, that's, that's how you do it. So the moment you do that, folks, manifestation will be easy for you the rest of your life. Hey, thank you so much, guys, for, for tuning in to this podcast. I'm so appreciative of this amazing worldwide audience we have here uh, at Thoughts Become Things. And I really want to encourage each one of you, check out my website, identitynetwork.net. Uh, check out my books, my courses. Find what you need. I try to write a book monthly. For those of you on the Book of the Month program, I try to prophesy to people all over the globe monthly. For those who have this reoccurring prophetic word monthly, I get before the Lord and prophesy to you. Get what God says. Give it to you and send it to your email because we want to begin to cause you to prosper. We want to begin to make you you know, download everything God has for you to where you're not poor. You're not sick. You're not waiting on something to happen. You don't feel alone. But whatever God promises to you, they can be yes and amen and manifestation. I don't, I don't want just a promise to say yes and amen. I want to manifest that yes and amen promise, right? Don't you? That's, that's, that's where the gold is. So tune in today and every day to the website He'll pick something that would that would minister to you, book or course, and let that absorb in your system. You deserve 
to be able to manifest just like our Heavenly Father does. God bless you. Have a good day. And don't forget, as I always close out the podcast, if you don't like your day, guess what you do? Change your thoughts. Change your thoughts and it'll change your life. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.